This is MRN Out Loud. Hello again, everyone, and welcome to the season premiere of MRN Out Loud, getting you set for each and every race weekend throughout the season. And we're going to kick it off with the Xfinity Series this time around. A ton of new faces there. One of them is Jeb Burton running for the championship with Colleg Racing. He'll be with us on the other side of the break. Stick around. The 2021 season gets underway with the Bush Clash at Daytona on Tuesday night, February 9th. Checkered flag in the air, Eric Jones by half the car link. The top stars of NASCAR will tackle the 14-turn iconic road course for the first time in Bush Clash history. Hamlin is there, all over the back end of Chase Elliott. It's going to be a drag race. Here, flag-to-flag coverage of the Bush Clash at Daytona, Tuesday night at 6 p.m. Eastern on the Motor Racing Network. As we get set to kick off Speed Weeks, Jeb Burton is with us and running for a championship in the Xfinity Series, driving the number 10 Camaros for Colleg Racing. And Jeb, I know that sentence is pretty much music to your ears. You and I have talked for a while about the struggles, the climb to get to this point. And now a good team, a full season. you got to be on cloud nine. Yes, sir. It's, it's been a dream come true. Uh, they've had me really busy uh, doing a bunch of simulator work with Chevy. Um, and as well at the shop. So just been uh, really excited to get the season started. Got a great team, great organization, and it's definitely a dream come true. Tell me a little about the simulator work because all the drivers are talking about that more and more now. How realistic is that stuff? I mean, you see all the, the iRacing things that are going on, but there's a lot more to it on the, the full high-blown simulators, right? Yeah, for sure. You know, the iRacing um, definitely doesn't hurt. It, it it's as real as it gets. Uh, the biggest thing is, is just familiar, familiarizing yourself with the racetrack and the bumps in the track and, and stuff like that. And, and, it, and it's still something to be doing with your team and building that chemistry. So um, it, it definitely is better than nothing. And, and any opportunity I've had to, to get on it, I've, I've been uh, trying to take advantage of it. 11 races in 2020, three of those turned into top five finishes for you. With a limited schedule like that and with COVID on top of it, how challenging is it to get to know your new team? Because, man, it's not like when you could just go and hang out in the shop all day anymore. Yeah, it's a little different. Um, I've been able to hang some at the shop uh, with my guys. I actually uh, went to lunch with my crew chief the other day. So um, really, really like the team that I have. Um, at Colleg Racing, really enjoy working with Bruce already, my crew chief. So just uh, just really excited. I feel like I got a great team behind me and uh, we're going to have our ups and downs this year for sure. Some tracks I haven't been to ever and some tracks I hadn't been to in a very long time, but um, just uh, really excited. You know, last year we had some pretty good runs, let a couple races probably slip away from us, but it's, it's going to be nice being in the seat every week and I'll be able to work on my race craft a little bit more. You've grown up around the sport. Most folks are familiar with your dad, Ward, and and you've seen the schedule kind of stay the same for a long time. And you mentioned going to some places you haven't been before. One of them that jumps off the page at me is road courses because there are a ton of them. And I don't think you got to a road course last year, did you? Well, I did. I went to Indy and the power steering went out on lap 10. So uh, I didn't really get to do anything uh, but practice there. So that kind of uh, blew. But like Daytona Road Course, I've never ran a lap around the place uh so everybody else got to run the race last year so i'm kind of behind the eight ball on that um road america i've never raced there mid ohio i've never raced there uh the charlotte roval i've never ran a lap around that place wow. so it's just uh i'm a little behind on that side of things but i'm doing everything i can um to try to try to get ahead what kinds of things do you do when you haven't been to a place before? I mean, the simulator you mentioned, but are there guys that you say, hey, what can you tell me about this track that you kind of lean on? Well, I would say A.J. Allmendinger and Justin Haley. I mean, both of them run really good at the road courses, especially A.J. Um, I'm going to be leaning on both of them really hard going to those places for sure. And there might be some tracks that I can help them at. Um, and, and at Colleague Racing, uh, everybody works really well together from, from the car chiefs to the drivers. So just – Really excited about working with those two uh, two guys, and I'll be leaning on them uh, a lot and watching a lot of footage as well. One of the things that jumped off the page at me when I was looking at your social media is uh, a little clip of you wading out of a swamp with some duck decoys. Tell me about Crossroads with the Burtons because this thing looks like Nat Geo. 
Yeah. So, uh, you know, when I'm not racing or, or doing something at the shop, I'm in the woods. And ever since I was a little boy, dad, dad uh, took me hunting and fishing. And I'm a big conservationist and, um, you know, love working the land, too. That's why our partnership with Nutrient Ag Solutions and their sustainability and conservation message is, is right up our alley. Yes. Yeah, so Crossroads um, is on the Sportsman channel. Um, and we air our episodes there and it's really about conservation, hunting, fishing, taking veterans hunting. I'm actually going hunting with some veterans, uh, this week, quail hunting, uh, with the nine line folks taking some veterans. So just always trying to introduce new people to the outdoors and, um, uh, show what's going on behind the scenes of my racing life and also what's going on with dad and everything he's got going on. So that's kind of what Crossroads is about. You mentioned conservation a couple of times there, and I think that may mean different things to different people, but all of us out, most of us anyway, enjoy, enjoy the outdoors. But when did you reach the point where you said, you know what, I want to do a little bit more than just than just hang out there and enjoy it? Yeah, you know, um, for, for me, it's not just about going to hunt and kill something for sure. Um, you know, the, the conservation side, dad's kind of instilled in me to, to try to leave the land um, better than you found it and, and do things on the land to, to help wildlife flourish. So that's really what we work on. We love to hunt uh, and fish, but at the end of the day, we want to leave it better than we found it and create new habitat and, and uh, help wild, wildlife. Boy, leave it better than you found it should apply to everything we do in life, shouldn't it? That's, that's, a, right. that's a fantastic message. Now, speaking of your dad, last year, I think it was, uh, there was a deal where he like found a snake in his garage or something like that, and internet just blew up. Twitter just went nuts, and now he's turned into like this kind of the, the crocodile hunter type of guy, but he's got a wildlife foundation. Tell us about, that's, that's not a, that unusual for your dad to be in the middle of something like that, is it? No, he's always picked up black snakes, and it's just a black snake. I don't, I don't pick them up, but it, uh, if the snake bites you, it's not going to kill you. Uh, so he's always picked them up and, and not really been afraid of them, and uh, that video went kind of crazy, and so he's been doing, doing more of that. But the Warburn Wildlife Foundation has a lot of different missions. Uh, we have a youth outreach program. that's kind of been halted right now because of COVID, uh, but, but the year before last, when um, we could go to schools. We reached over 10,000 students in the state, state of Virginia, teaching them about uh, land conservation, wildlife, and hunting and fishing. Uh, so that's really cool. And then also our veteran outreach program. Uh, we do a bunch of veteran uh, programs. We actually have um, a veteran house up near Fort, Fort Pickett. Um, some of our military. I saw that. Yeah, yeah. He, he like uh, put up some guys coming back from being on duty in D.C.? Yep. So um, we have a bunch of different veteran houses um, and a bunch of people that help keep those facilities going. So uh, Dad's Foundation has a partnership with the National Guard as well, helping protect uh, the live fire training around two different military bases, putting conservation easements on property. Um, so the foundation is doing a bunch of great things for the environment, wildlife and conservation and um, helping our men and women train as well. Now, your dad, obviously, uh, a lot of folks remember him in the sport, and you're still a young man, but you grew up in the sport. You've been around it your whole life. I'm curious what kinds of things, uh, what kind of really uh, memories, fond memories jump out to you as a kid being around the racetrack? And, you know, when you're too little to think, oh, my gosh, I'm going to be a race car driver, and you're just thinking, oh, I want to go play or something like that. Yeah, I mean, for me, I was always um, – in the motorhome lot doing stuff uh, with Brandon McReynolds, Matt Martin, uh, a bunch of others that, that come to mind. Uh, Chase and Ryan were a little younger than me. I hung out with Ryan some, but Chase was a little bit younger than me. I didn't really hang out with Chase a lot, but I just remember being, uh, being down in the uh, infield every weekend, getting in trouble, doing something. Um, <laughs> It's not fun if you don't get in trouble, right? <laughs> yeah, we, we got the we got the police called on us a couple times. Uh, me and Brandon McReynolds were hiding in the slide at Michigan. I remember that, and the police got us, so we got in trouble a couple of different times. But uh, but yeah, I just remember um, being there every weekend and and uh, and and just being around it. And I knew about 10, 11 years old that was something that I wanted to do, and and we started racing from there. 
You mentioned uh, earlier uh, a bunch about the hunting, and I know that I've seen the videos because I'm one too. You're a pit boss guy, so what's your what's your go to meal? Do you are you putting game on the pit boss? Or are you like oh, a yeah. steak guy? What do you like to do? Yeah, I love my steaks, but um, you know we don't buy any burger from the grocery store. Um, I have elk burger, bear burger, deer burger. We get all our stuff processed, and and that's what we eat. So. Um, yeah, I mean, we're always cooking on the pit boss. I have a great relationship with those guys. Brandy, my wife, actually has a cooking segment on our show um, with pit boss, always cooking something. So we really enjoy cooking on it. Now, I also know you guys have just passed your first anniversary. So what about that first year of marriage? Was it everything you thought, more than you thought? What, what, do you, what can you tell folks who were kind of on the fence about should I, shouldn't I? Well, I got really lucky. My, my wife um, takes care of me and she cooks um uh, a lot of food and she works really hard and um she she's a great great girl and helps me a lot with crossroads and a lot of my partnerships um so she uh she definitely helps me a lot and i'm really lucky to have her so um things really haven't changed a lot um we lived together before um before we got married and and uh just just really happy happy that's fantastic. I'm, I'll paraphrase this because the, the other version may not be good for air, but Richard Pryor said one time, when you find somebody willing to put up with your crap, hang on tight. So yeah, good, good go. for everybody, you, man. That's what it's all about. Yeah, everybody's got uh, stuff. Uh, you know how it is behind closed doors. Um, it's it's always different, right? But but I'm really lucky to to be with Brandy, and she puts up my crap. <laughs> <laughs> Mine does too, man. I know what you're talking about. Absolutely. Let's uh, yes, let's talk a little bit about uh, social media. Uh, I know you do a lot of posting on there, primarily about the your your loves of being outdoors that you mentioned. But one of the things I saw recently uh, jumped out at me because it has gotten me too. You talk about something, and then an ad shows up for whatever you've been talking about. Is that just not the weirdest thing? I mean, it just kind of shows you how powerful social media is in our lives. And I'm curious what kind of experiences you've had like that, that kind of tell you, wow, this is bigger than I thought. Yeah, I don't, I don't, I'm not really sure. I've seen some different things about it where you can go on your phone and, and turn something off. I'm not sure if our phones are listening to us or, or what. <laughs> um, I, I don't really like that, uh, to be honest. I feel like... Um, you know, that's a little, that's a little, uh, weird. A little much, uh, yeah. Yeah. It's a, it's a little much. Uh, I, I kind of like Twitter the best to be honest, because it's really not, you don't really see a ton of ads on Twitter or at least I don't. And, and everybody, nothing's really blocked and, and you see everything versus some other, uh, platforms block everything and, and target things and, and stuff. So I, I kind of like Twitter the best. Let's talk a little bit about the racing as we wrap up here. Headed to Daytona, and you're going to be there for a couple of weeks on the big course, the traditional course, and then the road course a little bit later. Tell me about super speedway racing from the standpoint of you can do everything absolutely right and get wrecked and finish last, or you could just be in the right place at the right time and win the thing, and it seems like almost everybody has a shot, not to mention the fact that you're so tight all day long, if you sneeze, 20 cars may get torn up. How nerve-wracking is that? Yeah, it's kind of frustrating. You do everything right. I mean, a couple of different times, I've just let some races get away from me um, at Daytona. I mean, last year, I did everything right. I mean, I won the first stage. I finished third the second stage, and I was running second with five laps to go, and I got wrecked. Uh, so it's it's um, it's a little bit of luck involved um, and just right place, right time stuff. But um, you know, I feel like I definitely will have a shot and I will be in position to win and just uh, got to have some things fall our way and, and pick the right lines and, and stuff like that. I, I feel like I'm really cautiously aggressive on, on speedways and, and I do a good job being there at the end, um, but just need to find a little magic those last couple laps to try to finish it. I mean, I finished fourth with JGL racing in 17 and another hundred yards and they didn't throw the caution, I would have won, I would have won the race. So, um, it, it, Talladega, uh, I led the white right there. Yeah. We got, we got passed. So I've always been right there. I just need a little bit of luck. I feel like, um, and maybe, maybe make some different moves with the last couple of laps to go, maybe be a hair more aggressive, um, with those last couple of laps to, to get the win. But, but I know we'll have a really good car. I'm um, really looking forward to getting there and uh, start the season off right. 
Colleague has been really good at the big tracks for sure, but let's finish on this question. You hear a lot about manufacturers sticking together at the super speedways, particularly on the cup side, but you've got several teammates. Three teammates are going to be with you, I think, in that race. And is, is it something where you can think, okay, here's what we're going to do, and one lap in, it's all just out the window? Is, is there any value in trying to put together a plan as, as something as chaotic as a super speedway race? Yeah, it's really tough sometimes, but I feel like uh, Kyle did a really good job last year working together. So I'm sure we're going to have a plan um, to be working together and, and stay together. And if, if you can commit to that and everybody can stay to that, um, it's definitely an advantage. Absolutely. Well, we'll look forward to it, Jeb. Congratulations on the ride. Look forward to a strong season for you and see you at Daytona. All right. Thank you so much. There you go. That's Jeb Burton. We'll be right back. The 1993 Cup Series season had more than its fair share of twists and turns. Rusty Wallace flips one, two, three times. Every time the car's hitting and it's wrecking, and you're like, okay, this one here is going to be the one that's going to put the lights out. It's going to knock me out. Here's stories you've never heard before in a 10-part series called the 1993 season. Dale Charge got the lead. He goes to the inside. Earnhardt's not going to get him. I knew if he got to my bumper what was going to happen. You can download it for free on iTunes or on MRN.com right now. We want to thank Jeb Burton for joining us on the season debut of MRN Out Loud, telling us about his 2021 campaign with Colleague Racing in the Xfinity Series and sharing some of what he likes to do out in the woods with us, among other things. We also want to thank you for joining us again this season. And don't forget, a new episode drops every Thursday on Motor Racing Network at MRN.com and wherever fine podcasts are downloaded. Now, don't forget, coming up on Monday, February the 8th, Motor Racing Network will have a special Daytona 500 edition of NASCAR Live. It's called 2001 Speed Weeks, the week that changed NASCAR. We'll look back 20 years ago to a week that sparked significant changes in the sport. That's Monday, February 8th, starting at 7 p.m. Eastern time right here on the Motor Racing Network. So until next week, I'm Woody Kane saying thanks for joining us, everyone. <laughs> <laughs>